Top of the morning to you all and welcome to build episode number 15. Today, I, or in today's episode, I'm tackling a couple of big tasks. I definitely wouldn't say today because I've already been going for four or five days working on this and foresee at least a couple more. My biggest task is getting all of this electrical system in and running. It's gonna be so good to have the lights working and everything else kind of going but I would be bullshitting you if I said I'm excited about actually hooking it all up because the electrical side of the van build is really daunting. You know, I'm not an electrician. And as you guys know, if you saw, I'm putting in two 200 amp hour lithium batteries and that in itself should tell you that this is not a cheap system. I have got a really high end Xantrex inverter going in that is awesome. I had one in my last van there. They're bloody awesome. So I'm looking forward to using that to power blenders, coffee machine, everything like that. And then I have the Red Arc Manager 30. And what this is, is a total battery management system that is gonna ensure that my batteries stay super healthy because when you spend a lot on a battery, you want them to last a really long time. But I don't wanna get ahead of myself because before I get into the electrical system, if you remember last week's video, if you saw it, then you'll know that I said I tried to make the overhead cupboards and I screwed them up. So this week I've had another attempt at making the overhead cupboards. And the reason I need those done now is because one of my electrical compartments lives in the overhead cupboard. So this was my first attempt and it was a dismal fail. Let's have a look at my second attempt. The devil run I gave him poison just for fun I had one friend now there's none I made the devil run I've never used a router before and I have to admit I'm slightly terrified but I'm gonna try and use it to cut out the template to do like an exact copy to see if it's an easier way we'll see how it goes <laughs> well, apart from being super messy, from what I can tell, that actually cut. That was really easy. This could actually be a goer. Holy shit. That is epic. Good morning. So last night I got all of the end pieces and the cupboard dividers all cut. And with that router, they are pretty much bang on identical. They fit really well. And so now what I need to do is cut out the kind of cross members that hold it all together. I'm going to get one of the pieces and show you kind of what I'm thinking for next. If you look at this, one of the pieces of support it's going to be a piece of the same Mitch Light material and it needs to be about this long, sit in here and it'll be a flat piece that'll join up. So I need to cut out this and then it'll be screwed in and you'll see they'll all screw together. I know that probably doesn't make any sense the way I'm describing it there. But if you look at this, the problem is if I cut a square cut here and a square cut here to put in that piece, it is going to come out over this side because as you can see, this angles down. Last night, after I finished working out here at like, I don't know, 8.30 p.m., I went and watched a couple of YouTube videos to learn how to figure out those angles because with my new plunge saw, I can put angles on the cut, so I'm hoping I'll be able to replicate that. So this is essentially how I did it. This tool is called a bevel gauge and you can adjust it, move it up and down. 
And what I've done, sorry, it's a bit hard one-handed, but I have set it so it's the exact same angle as this piece. And now obviously that doesn't tell you the actual angle. So then you just get your speed square, which a lot of you probably use purely just to get straight lines. Draw a straight square line. After you've got your square line, I've then got the angle that I had. Put it, and a little trick is to start your pencil at the line so you allow for your pencil mark, and then rule up. And so that's the angle that I was getting on that piece. And then now, with that little notch, put your pencil on the point again, put it square, and that is the pivot point. So what you do is you rotate it until the square is exactly on that new line. And then if you look down here, on the speed square, there's angles on this side. Where it intersects the table down here is the angle that we're getting, and it is almost bang on five degrees, which means this little angle here, five degrees, which you know that the total is 90, so this is 85 degrees, this is 90 degrees, total 180. So I've changed the angle on this to five degrees. So you can now see that this outer edge here is angled, and if I was to put it on top of this and line up the edges, it should line up pretty much perfectly. And it does. I'm bad as bad can be, so bad that it's hard to believe all oh, what they say about me. I'm bad, take a look and see, so bad that it's hard to believe. I don't care what they say about me. I watched an empire fall. Well, I think I said, I think last week I said, oh, hold on. Whew. I think last week I said that that plunge saw is my new favorite tool and it still is, but the router comes in a close second. This side overhead is finally ready to be assembled. I really bloody hope it fits up in place and lines up nicely. Good morning, day three of the upper cabinet build. I know it's confusing because I keep wearing the same clothes, but I am getting so much kind of dust and stuff over me, I figure I may as well just not mess up another set. I have to say, is this not the most beautiful overhead cupboard you've ever seen? It came up an absolute treat. Dad and Judy are actually gonna come help me fit it up because it's not really a one man job. And you can see those angles I cut up came up beautifully. It all fits in so nice. That's the other angle. Hey Judy. Oh wow, that was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very clever. It's as good as a board one. I'm bad as bad could be. I'm bad, I'm bad as bad could be. Bad, I'm bad as bad could be. Okay, so here they are. I have to say that I am quite amazed that they fit up kind of perfectly first time. To secure them in, I put metal screws into the metal ribs and then just use the chipboard screws into the liner as well. And it is super solid. Like, I can shake the whole van. Now that I know how to build this, and I'm pretty happy with the end result, I was considering moving on to the electrical because now I have my electrical cupboard ready to go. However, because I'm on a roll, I'm going to build this side as well, and then that way the cupboard carcasses are all kind of done. I'm going to try and smash it out all today, so 
see how that goes. I'm bad, I'm bad as bad can be. Bad as bad can be so bad. That is hard to believe. Oh, what they say about me. I'm bad, I'm bad. Yeah, I'm bad. Take a look and see. So bad. That is hard to believe. I don't care what they say about me. I'm bad, I'm bad. Oh, I'm bad. Good morning, the sun is out and round two of the cabinets is done. If this one fits as well as the last one, I have to say, honestly, I'm kind of proud of myself because these cabinets are way harder than I thought they would be. Dad and Judy are on their way back again to help me get this one up. So please give them a thumbs up for helping me out on this and all the help they give me in general. All right, let's see if it fits. Good, Max. Looking very good. Yeah, I gave this end a little trim. Yeah, you yeah. a bit neater than the other one. And right? I gave that one a trim too. Yeah, jeez. Woohoo. 60.5. 60.45. I'll take that. Lovely work, Max. I am so stoked with how the overheads turned out, and it is really starting to give me the exact feel for how this layout is going to feel actually living in it, and I have to say I am loving it. And I'm loving my decision to leave this section above the couches free of overheads because it just really opens it up and I am going to have some sneaky little features in there too, so stay tuned for that. Before I get into the electrical, I wanted to quickly address the weekly questions and there's a comment that I can't really go past because there was probably 50 comments saying it. I'm so glad you all loved my extending deck slash table and yes, it, it is both. I feel like some people need to take me a little bit less literally. I made it to be a table out the back but also a potential deck, especially for Oki. I think he's going to love sunbaking on it. But the comment over and over again was that I should have some form of extending leg out the back of it to increase support when there's weight on it. And even though the draw runners are designed to carry that weight, I'm going to take that on board because you're right, I wouldn't want them bending. So I assure you it will have some extra support before it gets too much weight on it. Okay, so we are onto the battery compartment area and as per usual, I have slightly over-engineered it and overthought it. So this area under the seats is going to be my battery compartment. I'm going to put a partition wall in from here and I had to make it big enough that I allowed enough ventilation for the inverter and everything else and I wanted to make it neat. So all my wires are under here. They're all obviously going to be sorted. But it's generally a bit of a game of Tetris in terms of fitting things in without over cramming them that they don't get adequate ventilation. So after I've put these lithium batteries in place, the next kind of most essential thing that's going in my battery system is the Xantrex Freedom XC 2000 watt combi inverter. And by inverter charger, that means that not only can it power all your household devices working as an inverter, but it is also a charger where you can have it plugged in from AC power as in like a house power, plugged into this and it will convert that and charge your batteries with it. So as you can see, <laughs> there is movement even if it's only slow. And now that I've cut all the panels and things, it's time for the lugging party. It's two down, a thousand to go.
Tell you what I absolutely love, and this probably won't surprise many people, is heat shrink. And how neat it makes all of your kind of connections look. And it's like, it's just so easy as well. I don't get why people think it's easier to use electrical tape because it, you literally slide it over and you can't screw it up. Looks neat as a pin, ready to go. And this cupboard, very close to being ready to go. And me, ready to go. So this bad boy, which I showed you at the start of the video, is the Red Arc Manager 30, and it is essentially, as the name suggests, a manager. It is an all-in-one. It is a DC to DC charger, meaning you can charge off your alternator. It is a solar MPP charge controller, and it can also charge from AC power. On top of all those things, it looks after your batteries to make sure, especially with lithium, that they stay at the right state of charge all the time and ensure the correct input is coming in. The end of another day, it's 10.30 at night, and there's been some progress, but my head is really kind of starting to hurt with how much I'm thinking about all this, and if you think that I'm generally a neat person when it comes to the build and the projects, I'm going to give you a bit of a look at the bomb site that is currently going on here before I go to bed. I feel like this is actually kind of a accurate representation of how my head is at the moment. Yeah, oh dear. Good morning, it's just before 7am and I am heading back into town half an hour away to get more parts for the fourth time in four days but I'm pretty sure this is the last time. It is an absolute corker of a day and with that my spirits are soaring because I am flying through it finally today and almost have the whole DC side hooked up then I'm going to move on to AC I think it's like 16 or 17 degrees you never have to worry I'm gonna find you You know that you deserve it I'm right behind you You got me stuck in this race And I'm about to get even I'm breaking out of this cage And it's about to get heated Hot lava and flames I'm a freight train Coming to see you You got me stuck in this well, that was an absolute nightmare, especially these screws, they're so fiddly and the little pricks just don't want to go home. It's like a Happy Gilmore style, like get in your hole and they do not want to. Well, it is another glorious day and this time... The sunshine is potentially going to mean a little bit more because the batteries are ready to go. Let me show you guys. But first, fashion. Okay, here is the system in all of its glory. Before I talk you through it all, if I just turn this one on, everything should be a go. Let's see if things are working. Look at this sexy panel here. All right, so we have 13.3 volts coming in. That's perfect. I have nothing wired up in the fuse block yet, but as you can see, it is ready to go. Let's test the inverter. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. So this is the remote panel for the Xantrex inverter. 
and it has turned it on down here you'll see as well and it that remote panel pretty much just mirrors what you can see down there and now this is my red arc manager 30 and it is good to go it should be calculating so if you if you can see that apparently when it's first hooked up to the battery it will say calculating for one full charge cycle of the battery and that is because it is kind of gathering because it's a battery management system it's gathering all the information it needs to know about that battery and its state of charge before it can kind of tell you okay this is how charged it is this is how long it needs to go and considering that the sun is shining outside this should tell us whether it's getting some solar input look at that so 19.1 volts of solar Another easy test. Now I haven't labeled it yet, but this should turn on. Exterior light, baby. I think it's time for a bigger test because I don't have any power points wired up yet. I have hooked up, this is just a power lead that I'm running. And then here is a smoothie that I prepared earlier. This is a thousand watt blender. It's actually, I've got a new blender coming, so this might be its last hurrah. Can you do it, inverter? And you can see the voltage has jumped straight up, back up to 13.1 volts. Solar power blended goodness. almost just came a real cropper because I was going to wire up the first of these LEDs and I thought, oh, surely that the black is negative, therefore the white's positive. And lucky I didn't wire them all up and potentially solder them and then turn it on because tested it on the battery. No siree, the black is the positive and the white is the negative. Seriously, what? Alrighty, this is it. The lights are connected. I've put the fuse in. It should work on a dimmer. Oh, yeah. Whew. I feel like this is a big step forward and a long time coming. It's gonna be so nice working in the van with the lights. And how do they look from the outside? Give us a look. Oh, they look beautiful. And good timing too, because it is starting to get a little dark and I still want to show you the system. Let's do that now. If you'll indulge me, this took a lot of work, this system. So I'd like to quickly run you through exactly how it works, considering now we know that it is working and it's going beautifully. Okay, here's a quick system rundown. So as you know, starting with two 12 volt Solar King lithium batteries, they are hooked up in parallel, which means it stays 12 volt and it's 400 amp hours. From the battery positive, on the positive side, we go to the cutoff switch that turns off power to all my DC appliances, which is really handy. I didn't have that in my last van. And now this is the positive bus bar and essentially a bus bar, all it does is it moves the location of your battery terminal so you can have kind of more space to put on it. You've just got to make sure you get a high enough amperage one. So this is a big beast. I think it's 275 amps. This big thick bertha here is going to a 200 amp breaker and that is what feeds the power for my inverter there. Okay, now this positive runs to a 70 amp breaker, same kind of thing. And it goes down to my Red Arc Smart Battery Isolator. What this does is it protects your system from over discharging. So lithiums really don't like going below 20%. And this, you can set a low voltage discharge and it will cut off 
your loads so you don't go below 20% and it'll click back in once you've got more power again. From there, you notice this red cable going down. That runs underneath and then up through the wall and it finishes here. And that is what powers my fuse block. As you can see, I now have the fuse in there for my lights. If I take that out, my lights go off. And this fuse block's really cool because it will tell you when there's a fault and it will tell you which one. So that's the one for my lights. No fault, we have lights. And the only other thing on the positive side is this one and that's what feeds my Red Arc Manager 30. Now the Manager 30, it actually relies a lot more on the negative side. So if you see here, this big bertha coming out of the negative here goes to the battery sensor or it's also known as a shunt and that has the negative on one side and the common ground on the other. I have a, another bus bar for my common ground and that's where all those are going there. And they all enter the Manager 30 by this port which is super easy, you just screw them in. And then, yeah, the Manager 30 kind of reads everything that's going on in your system, makes sure it balances it right, and it controls what is inputting to your battery. A really cool feature is that it has green power mode, which essentially means, say you're getting power from solar, as well as AC power. It will charge your battery with both, but it will prioritize solar power. So yeah, it kind of prioritizes green energy, which is obviously really cool. And to be honest, I don't plan on using AC power, like power from houses, very often at all. I've got 320 watts of solar on the roof, and whenever I drive, the alternator is also going to charge my battery. So this baby is going to be off grid like you it will be completely self-sufficient and you know in today's world it's kind of cool to have a vehicle that or a home that is not reliant on anything else and that is my system what do you guys think are you impressed do you think i've done it terribly this is way different to my last system it's way neater it's way more complicated it's way more expensive a system than my last one because I went really budget last time, but this time it is for the long term. And just like that, electrical is done, the overheads are done, and I am stoked with the results. Thank you so much guys for sticking with me. I hope you got something out of this episode. The electrical I found a little bit hard to film because there was so much sitting around on my ass just trying to figure out what to do. But I am, as I said, very happy that it all works now. Next week, I'll be tackling plumbing. And by after that, it's kind of all the big tasks done. This van is turning into a home and it is really starting to be quite a luxurious one, if I do say so myself. I'm sorry again that this video took quite a while to come out. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I put up multiple stories throughout the last week and half, kind of giving progress updates. So I'll put my Instagram here. Make sure you follow me there so that way you know when videos are coming out or if there's a reason that it's been delayed. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video or think that the van is progressing nicely, please give the video a thumbs up and I will see you guys for the next episode.